Hi, I'm Tad Olson, the owner of Olson Aluminum, and I'm here to show you the right way to make a casting, how to make a great casting, how to cast aluminum, how to cast the Olson way, the Olson, the Olson, the Olson way, the Olson way. We specialize in pressure tight, leak free casting. Our casting is actually machined like bar stock, free of voids, free of shrinkage, free of porosity. We are a bit of a niche foundry, if you will. We go after a lot of pressure vessels. We go after a lot of hydraulics, pneumatics, uh, fluid controls. With superior surface finishes and excellent machinability. With tight grain structure and the best metal integrity you can get in a casting. From low volume to moderate volume, from several ounces to 600 pounds plus. Everybody provides a casting that's machinable, but, it, but the grade and the quality of the castings is a little different. Typically, sand cast foundries, or most foundries in general, will have problems with porosity issues, whether it's shrinkage, whether it's gas-type porosity, oxides in the metal. So for pressure vessels such as hydraulics, pneumatics, uh, any type of fluid control type items, that is a, uh, that's a detrimental thing to have. Uh, we go to great lengths to make sure that we design those issues out of our castings to provide the customer with a casting that is machined like it's bar stock. We heat treat all of our own castings in-house. We do all of our own heat treating in-house and we've done that for the 26 plus years that I've been here. I've not seen a casting ever leave our facility. We do an awful lot of A356 uh, alloy castings with a T6 heat treat on it. The 356 alloy is the majority of what we pour in the bread and butter of the aluminum casting industry. The T6 spec is a wide spec. It runs roughly from 55 Brunel all the way up to 95 Brunel. We typically try and get them a little bit harder than most. We stay at the top end of the range. We want to be the machinist's best friend. So we drive that Brunel up to about 85 or higher. The machinists love that because they cut clean chips, they get better uh, dimensional characteristics, and their tool life is actually better. We've had machine shop after machine shop come back and say, you know, you're casting from machine like no others. There are other cases where you'd want metal integrity to be such that you have no voids, no pits. Uh, explosion proof devices, anytime you have a, a flame path that you have to uh, deal with uh, after machining, you can't have so much as a 10,000th pit somewhere on the surface. Those will be detrimental and actually causes a failure. The secret. So I'll tell you the secret. Oh, no, 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 we can't show that. Well, uh, I suppose you could say there's a number of secrets. Okay, the real secret is the consistency in which our guys use our rotary degassers to degas the metal and get it as pure and clean as what we need for all of our customers on a regular basis. Fortunately, they're not really secret. Uh, it's basically good casting practice. When you melt aluminum, it creates hydrogen gas bubbles in the metal. What we're doing is we're, is we're removing the hydrogen gas from the metal and also the oxides. That's what gives us the pressure tight casting. Nothing comes out of our melt room that does not have a degassing process done to it. You could say it's secretive, but it's just following the fundamentals and doing those things that the other people don't want to do. Too often, uh, many foundries in the world are fixated on driving the cost down to the lowest common denominator that they can get. Unfortunately, they're spending all their time with that and not creating a casting that's going to be successful in the first place. If, in fact, it's a failed casting, having the best price in the world doesn't mean anything and we have a cradle-to-grave analyzation of the chemical composition. So we know what it is. We know what the metal is when we buy it from the ingot maker and when we pour the metal at the spout. And per ASTM B26, we can provide those records. We like the machine like bar stock, and that's what the machinists want out of us. If you're impregnating your castings, you're throwing your good money away. Uh, I've been here 26 years. I can't think of a casting program yet that we've done that has had to have impregnation done to it to keep it from leaking. We firmly believe impregnation is a salvage operation and should not be necessary to have a leak-free and a pressure-tight casting. So we're a sand cast foundry and we're standing here in the air set room. We can do from very large castings to very small castings. You get much more near net shape to give us a larger range. Heavier castings, it allows us to glue cores into the cope, glue cores in the drag, we can put more chills in there. It helps with a more complex casting design. We also have a green sand foundry which has been around for quite a while. And that is a silica sand with oil and petrobond clay mixed in it to give it its strength. Making match plate castings, cope and drag castings, uh, Hunter edition for the automated. And our petrobond green sand gives extremely 
good surface finish. It's somewhat like a die casting. The Green Sand Foundry works great with higher production orders, and, and that's sort of the bread and butter of, of where we've been and where we've come from. And with the blend of the two, whatever the customer needs, whether you need a small ounce piece from the Green Sand Foundry or you need a complex shape from the air set, we're able to provide the needs that, that the customers have. We will get involved in people's programs, their projects early on, as early as we possibly can. Engineering is important to us, and our engineers will help the customers find what they need, from the guy that has a sophisticated engineering department with the finite element analysis, down to the guy that has a concept of what he wants to do and needs help designing the castings. Helping them out with such things as what is the proper amount of finish stock? Where should the datums be on the part? Where are there going to be snag grinding lines? Where are we going to grind? Where are the parting lines? Where's the inlet? But oftentimes people will come to us with a design a concept, an idea, and they're not really sure what they need. Sand casting, uh, permanent mold, die cast, investment cast. We will take a look at your concept and we will make a quick decision whether that's a good fit for our foundry or not. We are low volume to medium volume. If it belongs in another process, we will let you know that up front. We're very proud of our quality. You know, I would say 99.9% .9 quality rating. We're all proud to be foundry men. We enjoy making casting. When you need a sand casting, give us a call. If it's a quantity that makes sense for us, we'll make it for you. And if it's not, we'll lead you in the right direction to find somebody that can. And that is the Olsen way.